This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Our guest is Ralph Nader, longtime consumer advocate, ran for President of the United States a number of times. Ralph, I want to start by asking you about the latest um, uh, meeting yesterday, town hall meeting Donald Trump held in uh, New Hampshire. Uh, during the Q&A, the first person to stand up said President Obama is Muslim, not even American, and asked when um, the U.S. could get rid of Muslims. This is what the person said. Uh, he's called on by Donald Trump, who responds. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I walk on white plains. Amen. Okay. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. This is man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. Um, that was Donald Trump. And I want to get to what he then said afterwards, what his— um uh, what his campaign said. They issued a statement to The Washington Post saying, the media wants to make this issue about Obama. The bigger issue is that Obama is waging a war against Christians. So he certainly didn't back off um, his response or what his supporter said in this Q&A. Your response to this, Ralph, and then overall just talk about what we've witnessed this week with the Republican debate. But respond to Trump first. What should he have said? Well, what would he have said if uh, the man said uh, Jews instead of Muslims? What would he have said if uh, he uh, said Christians instead of Muslims? So, obviously, uh, Donald Trump is tone, uh, tone deaf about uh, the rights of uh, Muslims in this country. We have supposed to have equal rights under the law. What kind of stereotype racism uh, does he require in his audience before he stands up against it? Uh, would you Donald call him Trump a racist? Pardon? Would you call him a racist? Well, uh, we'll let him uh, answer that question. He certainly is not uh, rejecting racist comments that are made, uh, and that's the first sign. What that about his he... call for 11 million um, immigrants to be deported from this country? Well, uh, that, that is so absurd. And But you see, he gets away with absurdity. He has an immunity that would tank any other political candidate, because he's so outrageous, and the press thinks he's outrageous, so they give him a pass. It's really amazing. If uh, It's sort of like the way the uh, uh, media did with Ronald Reagan. He had such low expectation levels of them, of him, that when he exceeded them, uh, you know, uh, it was a surprise. Uh, so, but Donald Trump is fulfilling some important functions, Amy. He's disrupting uh, the slick uh, corporatism of the other candidates. Uh, he, for example, has said, well, why, why do we, you know, the big rich guys, why do we give money to politicians? Well, because then they do whatever we want them to do. That's a great quote. And he said, he was asked, well, why'd your companies go bankrupt four times? He said, well, that's a, that's a competitive advantage. All the other companies do that. Uh, so, you know, he's exposing the fraud of bankruptcy law when it comes to corporations compared to student loan uh, defaults. And so he, he's making these statements, which are, uh, are very valuable. Uh, who knows where it's going to end up, uh, but it's all a circus. He's the chief circus barker, for uh, clearly. Uh, and uh, uh, all these issues that you talk about on your program and other serious programming uh, go by the wayside. I mean, we've trivialized uh, the campaign to uh, select uh, the leader of the so-called greatest power in, in the world. Ralph Nader, uh, we just have a minute. And we talked to you right after Bernie Sanders announced his candidacy for the president. Now he is ahead of Hillary Clinton in the polls in New Hampshire and in a number of polls in Iowa. Your response to what this means? Well, he's tapping in what we all knew. There is a left-right coalition against, uh, behind Main Street against Wall Street. They don't like crony capitalism. They don't like violation of civil liberties. Uh, they want criminal justice reform, whether it's left or right. Uh, they're it's very worried about empire abroad and all the waste in the government and the Pentagon and elsewhere. So he's tapping into it. Uh, he now needs to broaden out. He's got to have a corporate crime policy, not just a Wall Street, uh, anti-Wall Street policy. And he's got to deal with military and foreign policy. Everybody that I know of in the progressive world are waiting to see how he's going to take on Hillary Clinton, the master corporatist, 
and the master militarists, uh, the latest being the uh, turmoil in Libya spilling over Africa. That was Hillary's war against the recommendations. Ralph Nader, I want to thank you for being with us. I'm Amy Goodman, our website, democracynow.org.